it's here we've arrived welcome back to an extra for paints uh i finally got some sprues here from uh war games atlantic and warlord games to compare this is a long time coming um really happy that i was able to uh to acquire these now um i've already done an in-depth uh, review of the warlord games sprue it's uh it's on an earlier video i'll post a link in the description below so check that out if you want a really crisp look at the uh, high resolution photos of the sprue. Uh, we break it down. We look at everything uh, that the sprue has, and um, we have some good conversations about it there. Uh, but today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I wanted to do a compare contrast. Uh, this has been done on YouTube already, but here's the difference. Uh, I'm um, I'm actually a trained historian, um, and I spend a lot of time looking at material culture for Italians in World War II. I own some of that material culture. Um, and, uh, and this has been like the Italians of World War II have been kind of like a passion for me since I got into, um, World War II wargaming. Um, and, uh, I, I have, you know, a great deal of knowledge about the kit and, and I think I can offer something different than what you've seen elsewhere. Um, so I will be looking at this as someone who, uh, can interpret historically these sprues and give you my opinions on both. Um, and I've already done that, I said, with this one in particular. Uh, I did think about doing that for the War Games Atlantic sprue. They have um, they have an image, a pretty decent, it's not great, it's, it's decent. You can see why, looking at it all, from a top-down perspective, there's shadows cast because it sits up higher than this sprue does um, from a flat surface. So you're not actually getting a great look without shadow, and that impedes the uh the clarity of the shot i think so i i there's two reasons why i didn't do a, a video on this sprue when i did one on this one uh one is because of that issue it wasn't very clear and i really wanted to make sure i was fair in my review i wanted to have physical uh examples of both to look at before making any sort of definitive decisions or giving my impressions on them uh publicly um and also I, I have to admit, just even off of that higher resolution image that I saw of these, I wasn't 100% impressed by the War Games Atlantic sprue. And again, I thought it might have been because the image wasn't very clear. I thought maybe if I had it in hand, I'd have a better impression of it. Um, let me just tell you, and I, and I don't mean this in a, in a cruel way, but my impression of War Games Atlantic's Italians... Is, has not changed. I still think that this is a horrible interpretation of Italians in World War II, and I'll explain why in this video. Um, but I, I don't want to come across like I'm, you know, just tearing up War Games Atlantic. Uh, sounds like there's some alarms and sirens going off nearby. I apologize to that, to, to viewers, if you're hearing that. Um, there is a, um, a station uh nearby about a couple of miles away and i happen to live on a very high uh high traffic street so uh, if you do hear the sirens i apologize it's not coming here it just happens to be that that's what the emergency uh trucks leave from so anyway sorry about that um so anyway i just want to say i'm not coming down on war games atlantic uh i do think that they have um some really strong kits out there i think that they Ha, they, the, the, the quantity in which they produce sprues is both uh, a positive and a negative. And I think this happens to fall into the negative category, but there are plenty of examples of kits that are positive. Uh, for, for example, their are uh, World War II um, resistance fighters. French resistance fighters, I think, is a decent kit. Uh, I also think that, or it's just a set, um, their Napoleonic stuff is pretty pretty decent as well um and their uh, uh fantasy stuff i think is pretty decent um to be honest uh I, I i've been mauling over this review for a couple of days and i've tried it a few different ways it's really hard to give a historical impression um without vocalizing my disappointment in this because um we have two options, right? We have two options here and it's, it's night and day. And, and it's so to a critical eye, it is so very obvious how much 
more love and care went into this kit uh, versus this one. The Warlord Games is just on top of everything. I mean, they made a few, there's a few errors. There's a few errors. I don't want to make it sound like this is 100% accurate. There are a few errors on here. Nowhere near the extent of problems that are, are present on the War Games Atlantic Sprue. Um, now, if you're one of those people that doesn't give a crap about history and you just want, you know, some cheap Italians on the table to kill because in your mind it's better than Italian, better than Germans and, and hey, that's, that's your prerogative, um, you know, then if you don't care, then just pick whatever set you think is more aesthetically pleasing to you and, and don't listen to me because this video is not really for you. But if you're the kind of person that is playing Italians because, it's not for the rules, right? I mean, we can all agree both action rules for Italians are horrible. They, uh, they're the only nationality, I think, with a negative national rule or two. Um, everyone else has these amazing rules. Americans have great rules. British have great rules. Italians have mediocre rules at best, and they're more of a drag uh, if you don't roll very well. And uh, you're not probably not p playing Italians to win tournaments. You're probably playing Italians because you have a passion for the history and that's your thing. And it's not, it's not because you want to destroy your opponent. It's because you have a passion for this particular nationality. And trust me, I get it because I am right there with you. Um, and that, to me, is what makes this more egregious. Um, knowing your player base, I think, is... Knowing your market, I think, is is a business is a business's primary objective, right? I mean, to, in order to sell to your market, you have to know your market, and this to me feels vapid um, in that regard. But listen, I'm not trying. Like I said, I'm not trying to come down to World Games Atlantic. World Games Atlantic is a great company. Um, they are very uh, community driven. They have a lot of great. Um, kits out there this just doesn't have to be one of them and i'm going to give you my honest opinion um that's why you come here i hope for honest informed opinions um and not just someone on the internet who says hey that looks cool this is a cool set i want to buy it and you should buy it too that's not what this is about this is about you know being completely direct with you and, and helping you make informed decisions because as someone who b plays a lot of games i want that from my content when i'm watching somebody else's content I expect them to give me the same sort of courtesy that I'm giving you right now. And you can call me a show, whatever. I don't care. People have already called me a show for Warlord because I was so positive about these. But that's not me shilling. I didn't get these for free. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be direct with you. I'm trying to be honest with you about, um, about the, the level of historical value in these sets, right? So, all right, that's me rambling. Let's let's actually get into it, right? Let's talk about this. So, first, let's just start off with what is comparable to both sets, right? First thing off is is the is the cost, right? The cost is comparable. We're talking forty dollars, forty five dollars a box, right? You get roughly the same amount of miniatures. I think you get more in the War Games Atlantic sprue, uh, sprue box, uh, sprue box than you do from the Warlord Games box because they have that additional heavy machine gun sprue, which is trash. And we're going to explain why at the end of this video, but it's trash. Uh, but you get it. You get you get a machine gun in the box, right? So some of you might not care that it's historically accurate or not. You get a plastic machine gun, and you're you're totally fine with that. And listen. Again, this is my opinion, and I just want to I want to reinforce that this is my opinions. Everyone has a right to their own opinions. Mine are I'm trying to make them fact based, um, but listen, everyone has their own likes and dislikes, and I want to make sure that it's clear that this is just where I'm coming from, from my play style, from my uh, my knowledge of history. Right, so um, you get more in the War Games Atlantic box. But on a typical sprue, you get roughly the same. You get six miniatures on each. Uh, you get a kneeling figure on each and five in action poses. Okay. The loadout. The loadout is very similar as well, um, which I think is more of a detriment to the War Games Atlantic sprue than it is to the Warlord Games one, um, which we'll get to in a few minutes here. But uh, you, you basically every every 
firing or, or, or the majority of arms on this on these sprues are the uh, Carcano M9141s. Um, so to give you a little bit of background on that, uh, the Carcano M91 was sort of like the original Carcano. Um, there are earlier guns that have Carcano mechanics. Uh, the, they have that M block clip um, and, uh, and 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 um, bolt action on some of the um, the um, uh, what the heck are they? The um, I, I have I just had a Starbucks this morning, so I want to say Venti, but that's not right. It's the it's the Vetterly the Vetterly Vitali uh, rifle was converted to uh, chamber uh, the six five by fifty two Carcano rounds, and they have the uh, the the man liquor system in them. So there are older guns that have that mechanism, but really the M ninety one Carcano is the older version of the Carcano, the standard Carcano. And then the 9141 is the shorter version of the Carcano rifle that was given to uh, Italian frontline troops. And then the M91, the regular M91 was sent back to rear echelon troops. So that's your basic, very basic uh, incorporation of why both of these sprues have the M9141. Now, uh, it's it's a good overall rifle. Um, the The one thing is that uh they don't neither set has the m91 the long rifle on it so this is sort of like a mid to late war set for both you can get away with either one um you could you could theoretically say that they're m91s but shorter <laughs> so if you if you don't care about that you can just call them whatever you want and make them whatever year you want it's all right but really uh both sets are only um historically uh good representations of 1941 on and really since the 9141 didn't come in the service until mid 1941 into 42 because of supply issues in the italian army um it's it's important to to to, to consider that uh to that aspect that both of these are roughly going to give you similar loadouts in terms of firearms that there are differences though but we'll get to those the differences after we get through the uh, similarities uh, on top of the M9141 Carcanos, there are carbines, Carcano carbines on both sprues, although they are different carbines. Um, this sprue has the uh, the TS carbine, um, which is for artillery and, again, rear echelon troops that are issued carbines would have this. Um, not... You do see you do see this in frontline troops as well, but mainly given to artillery and you know truck drivers and um, you know mortar crews or whatever would have the uh, the TS. Um, this sprue does not have the TS. It has the M thirty eight carbine Carcano carbine, which is like the latest version of the carbine. Um, it's the uh, it's the most prized Carcano carbine. It, in fact, a bunch of these went to Finland, I think, um, uh, at some point uh for the for the defense of finland um in fact it, a lot of a lot of m38 carcanos that are in circulation now that you can purchase as milserp are of uh the ones that were sent to finland and you can see that i i'm pretty sure i'm saying i'm, I'm right when i say finland someone in the comments can correct me if i'm wrong as always happens but um they have they have the uh, uh the the markings on it that would that they were actually um guns that were um, through circulation ended up in Finland. So there's that. Um, and you can tell this is an M38 because it has a notch on the uh, stock of the gun. Uh, it's hard to see, but trust me, it's there. You can look on your own uh, sprues. Uh, you can see that the hand here is gripping it at the notch um, in the uh, in the stock. So this is the M38 uh, Carcano. Um, and it, this sprue also has the... Um, the much beloved and much recognized cavalry carbine, uh, Carcano cavalry carbine, and that there's two of them on this sprue. There's one here in the either the firing or the or the carrying uh, pose, and then there's one underslung up here on top. Now, in, incidentally, to to kind of break the momentum here a little bit, um, the box art for War Games Atlantic has a cavalry car 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 carcano excuse me on depicted on it uh one of the one of the guys one of the i don't know if it's a bursaglieri or soldato who's 
shooting has is shooting a cavalry carbine. Guess what's not included in this box? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't have the most iconic weapon of the Italians in service at all on any of their sprues. Big oversight on their part. Um, it's it's actually kind. Of, it almost feels a little bit like false advertising because they have an image of a guy firing a, uh, a a cavalry carbine on the box, and you get the box, and that is not available anywhere. That that particular weapon is not represented at all in the box. So kind of a bummer. Um, now both going back now both have the M thirty eight SMGs. Uh, War Games Atlantic has two on theirs. This is an earlier version of the M thirty eight. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, it looks like the earlier version, like, like maybe like the, yeah, like the earlier, earlier version. And then the M38A is on the Warlord Games kit. And you can tell this is the M38A because it has the, uh, the vent holes drilled into the barrel. Um, also the, the, the way that the, uh, the magazine is presented and the stock as well. So that's the M38A. Beretta SMG, very, very loved SMG, um, sought after by both armies, uh, I should say all armies, whenever they get their hands on them, they prefer that to their their own SMGs. Um, it has a very nice feel when you're shooting it, very little kick, and uh, it's just a, a real pleasure to shoot. Um, and you can ask me how I know that, and I'll tell you how I know that. Uh, <laughs> uh, it should be pretty obvious. Um, so anyway, yes, uh, M38A, uh, on the, uh, on the Warlord Games, and then it's the regular M38 Beretta SMG on the War Games Atlantic. Um, so a couple other things that are similar. Uh, they have molded on, which I like, I, I'm really glad they did this. They molded on the, uh, the ammo pouches for the 6.5x52 Carcano rounds. So uh, if you're unfamiliar with um, Italian Italian kit, uh, I, got a, I got a little surprise for you. I actually own some original ammo um, as well as the original box that uh, the ammo came in. Um, so what you would normally see is these are all original rounds, 6.5x52 uh, rounds, um, that uh, were in World War II, which... I now own. Um, I have a whole slew of these, <laughs> and you can find them. It's not like you can't find them anywhere. You, you can actually get these um, from uh, surplus stores. Sometimes you can find them on certain um, certain gun shops and stuff like that. They have surplus ammo. Um, so this is the, the, the wrapping on the box. I have, but it, I didn't. It's brittle, and I removed it because I didn't want it getting damaged. It's, it's upstairs. It was falling off anyway. Um, but, uh, the important thing is, is that you get a, you would get an ammo box like this. This would be inside the ammo box. There'd be a lid on top of it, like, you know, like a cardboard lid. And then this would slide in to the ammo pouches here. Okay. If you guys can see that, hopefully it's very clear on my screen. You'd slide it in and then you just, you know, remove an M block clip. Now an M block clip is, I'll pull one of these out here. You can take a look. Let me just make sure there's not a whole lot of corrosion on it. Okay. So this is again, original. 6.5x52 Carcano ammo. Uh, this is the original brass casing, and, and this, these are live. These are live rounds. Um, I have not fired them. I don't want to blow up my Carcano, so I prefer not to, to actually fire them. But you can see there are six rounds in an M-block clip. Okay, they snap in just like that. Uh, it gets fed into the Carcano this way. Uh, the rounds fire from... Uh, yeah, so so the rounds the rounds are basically pushed up. The, the unblock clip um, does the first round fires, then this is pushed up, and then the second round fires pushed up, third round, etc. And then at the end, the unblock clip falls out of the bottom of the gun, um, and that's how the mechanism works. So you a typical infantryman, and I'm all giving you a bit of a history lesson here. Uh, the typical infantryman uh, would carry. Uh, six rounds total in their ammo pouches on the belt. And then if they were wearing um, the bandolier on top, they'd have additional four M-block clips for a total of 10 M-block clips uh, with 60 rounds. And then they might have six rounds in their Carcano already, uh, in which case it would be 66 rounds total. I think they might have issued additional rounds uh, you know, during campaigns. They would just shove them in their pockets or something like that if they, if they needed to. Um, so, so anyway, that is the, the basic equipment and kit of the, uh, 
uh, are presented on both sprues, okay? So that's fine, that's fine. Um, where we have the issues really come into play is with the headgear. And this to me is the most, um, that's the roughest part for me because I think, and I will fight you on this, I think the Italian army is was the, the coolest looking army in the Second World War. Um, say what you will, Bersaglieri and Alpini are some of the coolest looking troops out there, hands down. And a lot of that has to do with the headgear. And the Bersaglieri in particular uh, ha have a tradition of using those cockerel feathers. Um, and it's, a, it's extremely... Um, extremely important that you get that right because not only is the headgear so iconic right uh among amongst all enthusiasts of world war ii history um everyone can recognize a bersaglietti from a mile away because of those amazing feathers and you would think you would think that if you're if you're marketing a sprue that has bersaglietti heads on it right? Or the feathers on it to make Bersaglietti. You'd think that you would, I don't know, pay more attention to what you're sculpting, I guess, because none of the helmets on here are good. None of them are good. They're all kind of crap on this sprue. And that's the most damaging thing about this War Games Atlantic set is the headgear is not Italian. I don't know who was responsible for doing the research on the headgear and sculpting the headgear, but they did not do a good job at all. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that, all right? Because, because this is not correct. Like, this looks like chicken feathers. It literally looks like someone plucked a bunch of chicken feathers and made, like, a bush out of it, and then you... you they want you to put that on the side of your helmet and that, and they think that's a Bersaglietti? Like, no, 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 no. These are not the right feathers. I have no idea who thought this was a good idea. These, the Bersaglietti feathers are meant to be long. They're meant to be long because they're supposed to cover part of your face and shade, shade your face so that you can shoot accurately without sun glare, without your, the sun in your face. Like, that's the point. It's supposed to be a practical reason why those feathers are so long draping over draping over the eye so that you when you're aiming your weapon the sun is not in your face like that is that is the only reason for those things to exist now obviously the tradition has allowed for those feathers to continue to exist but again they now they exist more as a as an aesthetic uh point rather than a practical one although i'm sure there probably is still practical practicality to them i, I don't know i've not I don't know any any modern day Brasilieri, and if there are any modern day Brasilieri serving right now or who have served, please feel free to leave a comment below and let me know if those feathers are more of a hindrance or, or help when you're firing your weapon. I'm very curious to know. But back in the day, they had a practical purpose because the Brasilieri were sharpshooters. That was their point. Their their existence at the very beginning was as sharpshooters, as light troops who were able to shoot with those feathers covering. Uh, part of their face and obscuring that sunlight. This is this is not going to do that. This is not a representation of Bersaglietti. It's an insult to anyone who plays Bersaglietti. And I again, I will fight you on that because Bersaglietti, Bersaglietti has some of the coolest headgear in any army, period, even modern day. I still think it Bersaglietti rock. And I, and I just think that I'm fanboying a little bit about that. But that's the point, all right? If if you if you if you have a and it doesn't just stop at the Bursa Yeti, right? I mean, if if you know your fan base, if you know your marketing base, right? And you say, our our people, you know, that are are purchasing this, our 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 customers are purchasing this. They want to purchase Bursa Yeti. They don't want to purchase chicken feathers. They want to purchase cockerel feathers, the long ones. Now, again, in combat, those cockerel feathers they do get damaged, they get destroyed, they fall out, they get short, but they don't look like this. They don't look like this at all. When you see um, Bersaglietti with the feathers, you know, damaged, okay, they don't they don't become a bush like this. So I have uh, I have a book here with some great, very high resolution images in it, and let me just show you, um, you know, a Bersaglietti. 
so you can see for yourself. So here is a good example of, look at this absolute Chad here, uh, this Purcell per Yeti wearing this extremely tilted uh, M35 pith helmet. And you can see here uh, how damaged his cockerel feathers are, right? Guess what they don't look like? They don't look like a bush, right? And and here's, I'm just going to find a couple more for you so you can see uh, what I'm talking about because I think it's extremely important for every manufacturer to know what they're doing. So here's some others, okay? Now these are wearing the M33 helmets, okay? And you can see here, what do you notice? The first thing you notice is that they're blowing in the wind, right? They're damaged, they're not long anymore. But again, they don't look like chicken feathers, right? They look like long feathers that have been, that have been torn up, right? They don't look like this. And that, that to me is like a, a glaring oversight. If you're going to put Bursayeti feathers on, put Bursayeti feathers on. Like, don't, don't put on feathers that don't represent what you're trying to sell your customers. And uh, I'm just trying to, <laughs> trying to find an image here that is, uh, shows the, the Bursayeti feathers uh, in their full glory here. I'm pretty sure I have an image that I can show you. I'm sorry you're just looking at my screen right now and hearing me jibber jabber, but uh, I, I do think that is important to uh, really establish what it is I'm trying to say here. Um, that's not a good picture. Let's see. Do I have any? Maybe I don't have any. If not, I'm sorry. Um, I'm working with what I have within. Here we go. Okay. So here's some, uh, here's some guys you can see how long these Bursayeti feathers are. Now, this isn't even as long as they can get. So even these have sustained some damage. I've seen images of Bursayeti feathers coming all the way down to the collar from, from, their, uh, from their tilted hats here. And uh, this is really important here. You can see clearly in this, in this picture, all right, you, how, how completely iconic that is, right? And again... If you're someone like me who has a love of the history, you don't want to you don't want to put this on your Brusayeti. I mean, this just looks terrible, right? So that so let's just move on from Brusayeti. You know my opinions on it. You know that I think this is terrible. All right, let's move on to the next travesty in this set, which is supposed to be the sun hats. Okay, now. You saw those images of those uh, those soldiers and that and the, those you know the Bersayeti and the and the soldiers in there wearing those sun hats, right? You saw the shape, right? And let me just I'll, you know what I'll, I'll pull it up again just to show you what what they look like, okay? Because it's important that you keep this shape in mind. Let me see where is. Where's a good one? Here we go. Here's a, here's actually, here's a, here's what they look like, right? All right. So this right here, this, this is a, a this is one of the patterns where the, uh, the rosette and the image came off and they stenciled it on, which did happen, but this is the same M35 sun hat. Okay. This is the, this is the standard issue sun hat. Okay. And one thing you're going to note, and I'm going to show you an image of some artillery men wearing this sun hat so you can get an idea of the uh, the way it's supposed to look when it's worn. Okay, here we go. Okay. So first of all, take note about how far back it goes. It covers a full extent of the neck, right? You see this massive steeple here, okay? All right, let me show you another picture. And again, this is the M35 sun hat that we are talking about. And here we go. Here's a Bursayeti wearing his, uh, his M35 sun hat. Again, look how long it is on the back, how short it is on the front. It comes down to a point at the very front of the, of the hat here. You can see it kind of in this one too. This guy has a stenciled, a stenciled uh, image here. 
uh, as opposed to the rosette. Now, this is really important, okay? And so you can see it even on this one as well, okay? You see how how steep, how high that uh, that that dome comes up on top of the the helmet there, and you can see how far back that extends, right? So now I want you to look at the sun hats represented on the War Games Atlantic Sprue. You see that? Now tell me that's not a miner's hat. Tell me that's not some terrible excuse for a sun hat. Like when I first saw this, I thought it was like an Alpini hat because of how small it looks, right? It's got no brim. It's It's got a very con conical shape. This sun hat reminds me of the sun hats worn by the Italians in the Boxer Rebellion. Not even the same era, right? That's what that looks like to me. And if you Google images of Italian uh, Italians in, in the Boxer Rebellion, when you see this sun hat, you're going to see what this looks like. I think it looks like a miner's hat, personally. That's, that's horrible looking, right? Now, let me just, let's just compare. Okay, let's just compare. Okay. Hopefully you can clearly see the difference now of what I'm talking about when I say that the two are leaps and bounds apart from each other, okay? This is correct. This is an M35 sun hat, okay? This is how it's supposed to look. It's supposed to look, right? You can see the back brim. Look how, look how can you guys see that? Hopefully it's coming in clear on the camera. How, how broad it is in the back, that's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to cover the whole back of the neck. Okay, there's so much detail in this hat and how they presented this hat, the whole kit really. But like this, just just this one example here makes my entire case for why this is the superior sprue. Because not only did they get the helmet right, but look how jaunty these helmets are, right? See that? Look at the tilt. On these helmets that proves to me that when they were sculpting this someone had the foresight to say take a look at some of the images and try to get that character right right try to get the italian character right because people that play this they want that they want that personality to come through they want that chad italian suave chill personality to come through that is what they want right you get that on this one. You know what you don't get on this one? Any of that. You get none of that. You get a, a miner's hat. You get chicken feathers. You get an attempt at an M33 helmet. I'll tell you what, this does not look like an M33 helmet. This looks like a modern day combat assault helmet that you would find in Ukraine or, you know, in NATO troops. This does not look like a World War II helmet at all. It looks like someone tried to make an M33 helmet and then went like that. They squished it with their fingers. That's what that looks like. This is a extremely uh, smushed M33 helmet. It looks terrible. Absolutely terrible. I think, again, it's just... Maybe maybe what it is... I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what, the, what I, I dislike the most about this. Is that it's stiff. It's characterless. There's no love here. Okay, love, appreciation, respect, right? Money, greed. That's what I see when I look at this brew. And I'm not trying, again, I'm not trying to disparage War Games Atlantic. I know they're coming from a good place. They're just trying to put out kits as quickly as possible. And they have a lot of kits in the pipeline. And they don't have time to nitpick everything. I get it. But you know what? Warlord Games, they've got a crap ton of games. They've got so many games that both action players are getting pissed off because they don't feel like their game is getting enough attention. Yet somehow, Warlord Games constantly delivers top-notch plastics that are usually fairly historically accurate. War Games Atlantic is producing plastic set after plastic set after plastic set, and they're not taking enough time to really consider what they're doing. At least, I should say, with this set, right? With their, with their World War II Italians, I'm sorry, with their World War II French, excuse me, they actually did something really cool. They 
they posted up images of the production models, of the digital sculpts, and they listened to feedback and they made changes and they did things that the community recommended they do. They didn't do that with this one. For whatever reason, they decided we're just going to surprise everybody with this Italian plastic set and they're going to buy it because it's, it, because it's, it's out there. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. They got one up on Warlord Games. They posted that this was available and everyone rushed to pre-order. But guess what? This didn't come out. This didn't come out. And it's not their fault. There's plenty of production problems out there. There's plenty of transportation problems out there. I get it. I understand it. This, the release date of this was supposed to be in November. It just came out this month. March. Okay, November 2021 to March 2022. That was when they said it was going to come out in November. Guess what? It didn't. Warlord Games had theirs out in December of 2021. So they went, they had these out faster than Warlord Game or War Games Atlantic could get theirs out, right? And not only that, they proved beyond a shadow of a doubt, in my mind, right, that they had taken time to get this right, right? They did so much on their sprue. So let's stop talking about War Games Atlantic for a second. Let's talk about what War Game, Warlord Games did right, okay? So besides the sun hat, besides the uh, the M33 helmets here, which are absolutely 100% aesthetically correct, right? They took the time to realize, they realized that they could not produce the Alpini, the Bersaglieri, and the Black Shirts and, and Army on one single sprue. They knew that. You know why they knew that? Because the kits are different. The kits are different between each one of those factions, or I should say branch of service. Um, you're not going to get all of that on one sprue. They tried. They tried here, and look what happened, right? They realized that you had to take time to do each one individually. That's why they're releasing the Bursa Yeti in plastic and why they're releasing the Alpini in plastic as their own separate sets because the kit is different. Now, here's, here's what's great. They had time to include, because they, they separated all three of those boxes, they could expand upon the regular army and the black shirts, right? They could give you options for your standard force types that this set doesn't have. So you have the soft fezes that the black shirts off, often worn. You see them, in, you see plenty of images of black shirts and these soft fezes on campaign. You have the hard fezes up here, which were worn um, often by extremely motivated political fascists in the army, right? You have, um, you know, m more of these gas mask bags. Now you might be asking why there are so many gas mask bags. Well, I'll tell you, it's not for the gas masks. A lot of these bags were used as additional storage for ammo. There's one thing you don't notice on, or you don't see on images of frontline Italian troops in World War II uh, prior to 43, and that is, I'll tell you, SMG pouches for magazines. They just aren't present. Um, with the exception of the samurai vest, which you see on um, your your harder, you know, hard hitting. Uh, elite troops like the, the paratroopers and the marines, um, your regular soldato would not have access to supply of those SMG pouches. Instead, they used their pockets and they used gas mask bags or haversacks to, to store that, that extra ammo. So if you look at pictures of troops on campaign, you'll see their pockets are stuffed, right? They're stuffed. And usually they're stuffed with things like food and stuff like ammo. So just keep that in mind. Um, all of these have all these gas mask bags here, they're there for a reason. There's an earlier version and a later version of the gas mask bag. Again, it's aesthetic. It's whatever you prefer, whatever your period is presenting, you're presenting it with your troops is, um, that's what you go with. All right. These are not backpacks. All right. There are no backpacks on this brew at all. Um, with the exception, I'm sorry, I say that. And then I was like, oh yeah, except for this one. Uh, this is the loader backpack for the Breda M30, which again, both have LMG. Um, and you can tell this is uh, the loader backpack because it has two spare barrels on the back. I am so impressed that they thought to include that. This brew doesn't have that. This brew does. Love, no love. Sorry to say. That is how I'm viewing this. All right. Respect, no respect. Right. Money, love. Okay. I'm telling you right now. 
this is how I feel. They were they were clever enough to include a um, a, a Breda thirty. Um, uh, what is that? A uh, feeder, ammo feeder. Okay. So if you're not familiar with the Breda, uh, the Breda M30 LMG, right? Um, essentially, let me see if I can show this on camera here. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it. Here's the uh, the magazine, the attached magazine, right? So what you would do is you would flip this forward, right? So it would essentially go like that, all right? And it would rest upon the edge of the gun, and it would have an opening, right? So the feeder clip, where's it? Here it is, okay? And I actually, hey, I actually have one. Ta-da, right? This is the real feeder clip, all right? What you would do is when the magazine went like this and then was opened, okay, you would slide it in, okay? And then you would pull, it would, the, the, the ammo would stay, and then you would pull the feeder clip out and the, 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 the clip, the prosecutor feeder clip would come out, okay? So at that point, you would then take the, take it, you know, take it from here to this position. It would lock back into place, okay? And then you're ready to fire, all right? So they included a feeder clip in here. I mean, that's how much research went into this, right? Um, the ammo box for those feeder clips is correct, 100% correct, Um you know, they they just they just did so much on here. I mean, the level of detail that went into creating this set. I mean, they went so far as to even include I didn't I didn't notice it at first. Okay, so so let me show you this. Both of these kits have bayonets, right, to put on your to put on your uh um your belts of your miniatures. Okay. So this is the correct um M uh M9141 bayonet uh frog. Okay, they included the same thing on a, on their kit. Okay, the M, here's the M9141. Uh, but what about the Carcano? What about the Carcano uh, M38? That has a totally different bayonet. Well, incidentally, that's it right there. That's the bayonet. It's totally different than the fighting knife. Okay, this is the fighting knife. Okay, now take a look at that. That has that has a frog. It's totally different. That is the M38 bayonet, and I know, again, because I have one. <laughs> I'm not going to show it to you. I don't want to get my channel banned from YouTube. Um, but I have one, and it uh, that's it. That is it right there. So you got the funny knife. You got the M38 bayonet there. Um, you got the loader box. You got the feeder clip. You got the hand gesture. Okay. That's a that's a what the fuck hand gesture by the way excuse my language a what the f hand gesture uh, it does not mean f u a lot of people think that this means f u it doesn't it means what the fuck um, you know it's like what what do you mean what do you want what is this what is it you're saying what this is what you this is what you use okay all right uh, anyway, so anyway you have the gesture I think that's really I think it's cute honestly I think that there's a there's some diorama um, value in that right. Uh, again, that's that, it's that character. It's the it's the character that you're seeing in the War Lord Games sprue that is not present in the very sterile War Games Atlantic sprue. Okay, um, it, it's just there's just so much there's just so much detail here. It's just you know the the holster is correct for the for the Beretta um, that is on that is being held here. All right. Um, let me just see. I just I just can't get over the the quality and the details. Now again, we talked about we talked about some inaccuracies, right? So the the pullover smock here isn't one hundred percent correct. Uh, if it's a Sahariana, it should have pockets. It doesn't have pockets. I think they were just missed um, because it doesn't have ties either. So you could theoretically make this a windbreaker, which you see where worn by a lot of motorcycle troops, the Bersayeti had windbreakers that they would have pullover windbreakers like this. The only thing that they're missing is the ties down the side. So they would they would normally have like um like they would be there would be like um like ties like down the like in a crisscross down the side of, of, of each side of these. You could paint those on, right? And it would be historically accurate. So you're fine. If you really care about that, you can do that. You can sculpt it. If you have sculpting ability, you can even sculpt pockets on here. You can sculpt those ties. Uh, and that would solidify this as a, a Italian World War II windbreaker. Um, 
So, so that's the one inaccuracy. There's another inaccuracy on here with the M38, um, the, uh, um, the way that the sling is attached to the gun. It wasn't underslung. It was actually more like it is correctly done on the, um, uh, the Calvary carbine. You can see that it's attached to the side of the stock. And that's how the M38's sling should be attached. I don't... Uh, yeah, maybe it is attached to the side of this. It's hard to tell from this from this sculpt, but it looks underslung, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's attached to the side, and it's just the way that the the sculpt looks. So maybe it is correct. Maybe that's correct. It's hard to say. You, you can judge for yourself. Um, so yeah, honestly, this is why I think that War Games Atlantic just kind of bit the dirt on this one a little bit, which is a shame... I would have loved for two separate plastic World War II kits. Um, for kit bashing, for kit bashing personality, for personally, I love the kit bash miniatures. Like I bought, I bought um, the new Warlord Games um, British and Canadian box as well, so I could make some co belligerents out of both kits. Um, so I love kit bashing. Unfortunately, there's very little that I could even use. From this set so let me before we end this video i want to show you i put together some miniatures here and i want to just show you something here because i think that there's an aesthetic reason why i also don't like these okay so i'm going to bring my camera down okay now um let's take a look here so both warlord okay War Games Atlantic. Again, that freaking miner's hat. I, I, I tried to keep it comparable so that you could get an idea of scale and also um, just proportions, why, you know, and, and, and the, the accuracy issues, okay? So first of all, this grenade is way too big. I don't know why they thought that Italian hand grenades had to be the size of a head. That is not accurate. Uh, this one is accurate. Um, again, look at that head tilt. <laughs> that hat tilt on that head that is just too too cool man um one other thing i like about this kit is the um the canteen is attached i don't have to worry about attaching that um yeah i mean i'll tell you i'll be honest with you i don't like the way that the arms go on the bodies of war games atlantic so this to me looks like a lazy sculpt like someone couldn't be bothered to make that fit correctly the same thing with this one now i used um tamia plastic cement so it fits a little bit better because i used the plastic cement instead of regular plastic glue um like the gel glue i don't particularly like gel glue anymore i primarily only use tamia plastic cement um so yeah i just yeah i just don't like it i, I just think it looks stiff has no character it looks like it belongs in a totally different war i mean maybe world war one you know with the exception of the well maybe you could you could probably call that an m19 uh a carcano m91 um although i don't see a bolt on that gun now that i'm looking for it i don't i think they might have missed the bolt on that gun there's no bolt <laughs> where's the bolt <laughs> oh well whatever um, there's no bolt handle on it. I, had to, I don't know where the, hell, where the hell that is. Um, so anyway, look, you, you can see for yourself, plain as day, the quality difference there, right? I don't have to explain it to you. You see it, right? Now let's look at the LMG. Okay. Again, clear quality difference there. Look at the way the shoulders attach to the body. It just doesn't look good. It doesn't look, it doesn't look good. It looks lazy. It looks sloppy. It looks cheap, right? I just, I just can't. I can't with these War Games Atlantic Italians. I just can't. I just think that these are superior in every way. You guys might have a disagreement. You might say that you like the other ones better. That's totally your, your, you know, point of view, and and you have you have a right to your own opinion on it, right? Hands down, these Italians look way better. I think that they're more characterful. I think that they have more historical correctness. They are uh, better interpretations of what Italians, uh, Italian kit was in World War II. And 
um, I just I just think that there's more personality. There's more personality in 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 more Italian. There's more Italianness, if you will, uh, in the Willery Games one. So I know I've been rambling on for a long time here. I know I have, and I appreciate you guys sticking with me through this. Again, I want to make it clear. I don't have a personal vendetta against War Games Atlantic. I think that they are relatively good overall as a company, and they have some really great kits. Um, but I, I just have to I have to be honest, and I have to tell you straight up that this kit is not good. This kit is good. Not good, good. My opinion, based upon all my research, based upon um, my, uh, my background, and also just... From, a, from an aesthetic point of view on the tabletop, I, I have to go with the Warlord Games kit. Um, you're not going to get the heavy machine gun, but honestly, the heavy machine gun that they have in their kit isn't an Italian gun. I don't know where they got it from. They say it's an M37. It is not an M37. I'm sorry. You guys have the internet. You can look up Google as well, and you can see images of what an M37 looks like. And first, first thing you're going to notice is that an M37 is not belt-fed. It has a similar feeder system as the Breda M30. Um, and it was never belt fed, as far as I can tell. It was only ever fed using a feeder. Um, and uh, if you want a belt fed machine gun, you're going to have to look at Fiat. And uh, those guns don't look anything like the one in the War Games Atlantic set. Again, you're going to have to just, you know, you don't have to take my word for it. You can just do your own research on that, I guess. And, and, Look, you can ask any military historian, and they're going to probably tell you the same thing that I'm telling you, is that that is not an Italian gun. I have no idea wh who decided that was. It looks like a kind of like a like a bastardization between the Fiat and the M37. Um, so, yeah, it's a travesty. I didn't even want to pay money for it. I didn't even want to pay a few bucks for it as a, as a extra. You know, I could have bought it as a spare sprue. And I was like, I don't want it. Don't even want it. Get it out of here. So, listen, guys. I'm just being real with you. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video, hopefully soon. And uh, you all take care.